All right, so 2024 seems to be a year where I'm gonna travel a lot. I already started the year and I've been to Barcelona and then London. And with that means I have to travel with my computer and also edit from my computer, which sometimes can be a little bit frustrating, especially if you film a vertical. We all know whenever we film vertical and try to edit on a MacBook, especially a 14 inch one, it's a little bit of a pain because you're not, you're not seeing um, as good as you would on a horizontal timeline. And sometimes that for me is kind of frustrating because I got used to edit on two big screens and now when I travel I have to edit from this very small screen. But I think the main issue is not necessarily the screen, it's how you interact with it. And therefore I looked to see if I can find ways to be more productive and be faster with the type of workflow that I do on my MacBook. And so when I edit back home, I have the Blackmagic micro panels, which help me a ton and it speeds up my workflow in DaVinci Resolve. But when I travel, I cannot take that with me because it's way too big. And I look into ways to see if I can find something that could help me as good as the Blackmagic micro panels. And I found something that it's really cool and I started to love it more and more. And I'm talking about this brand new Loop Deck Live, which is a super small console that allows you to do a lot of things with your computer without actually touching your computer, which actually makes you be more productive. And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how I can work faster in Resolve using the Loop Dev Live. Now, what I wanna show you is that you can use this not only for DaVinci Resolve, you can also use it for daily tasks. For example, I can access my email super fast by touching a button, I can um, go into Safari, I can tune in my, for example, my volume, I can uh, increase the volume, I can decrease my brightness, I can do so much with this. Also, it also shows me the time and you also have this really cool feature where you swipe and you have a different menu that allows you to do a lot more. For example, you can access Spotify, you can access YouTube. So this means it speeds up your process way faster. For example, you're in DaVinci Resolve, you wanna go and write up an email, you just go like this and you go straight to emails, which is really, really cool. Now I wanna take this opportunity and go inside DaVinci Resolve and also show you how I set up my DaVinci Resolve in order to get the best quality out of my vertical shots. So once you open DaVinci Resolve, the Loop Deck Live automatically recognized you're inside DaVinci Resolve, which is a really good thing because you don't have to go and switch things up and so on. Uh, this is a really smart feature that I really love. Now. Inside DaVinci Resolve, every time I open this up, I do this. I go to project settings, I change my timeline resolution to uh, 4K, then I press use vertical resolution, I change to 25 frames per second. This is something that I use because I film in 25. If I'm filming at 100 frames per second, I'm slow motioning that down to 25 frames. This is because I live in Europe and in Europe we have a different frequency for lighting and therefore if I would to shoot 30 frames per second, all of the lights would flicker. So that's why I'm using 25. Now when I go to color management, I like to do this. I go into DaVinci YG Intermediate and then Rec 709A. All right, and after I do this, I press save. Now, what this setting do, they allow me to have my colors perfect. Like if I edit in Resolve and I export, it's gonna look exactly the same. But to do this, you kind of have to go into preferences and go to general and have use Mac display color profile for viewers um, checked. Because if you do this, when you color grade and when you export, your footage is gonna look the same as you color graded. Now, there are a few things when you export that you need to do, but I'm gonna get to that later. Now, um, I'm gonna import some footage. Sadly, I don't have uh, stock footage on my computer. I usually hold that on a hard drive, but I'm gonna take some projects that I edited the past couple of days and I'm gonna import them here so you can see a little bit 
how you can use this console because it's super cool. So for example, if you go to edit, it automatically goes you to the edit page. For example, if I'm into color grading, if I go to edit, it will take me directly here. Now, what I can do is basically, I have a few things that I really love. For example, I have the trim start. So when I press this, it automatically cuts from the beginning. And when I press trim end, it automatically cuts from the end, which I think it's something that helps me work and edit faster. So another thing that I really like to do is like use this button. It allows me to scroll through my timeline and get to the point that I want. And then I press like this and I can trim end, which is something really, really cool. For example, I can also select the clip in front. And for example, if I have multiple clips like this, and if I'm here, I can select only the clips in front, which helps me edit really good. Like there are a lot of different things that I really like and they are faster to access using this rather than using just your keyboard, which I think it's really, really cool, especially when you're traveling and you need to do your job faster. You also have this razor, which cuts the clip, which is really cool. You can also do something like this. For example, if you have an empty space, you press ripple start to playhead and it will bring everything and close that empty space. You also have the possibility to go frame by frame, which is really cool. And I use this quite often because sometimes you cannot really cut where you want and going frame by frame is way easier than going with a mouse. Now, I want to go again to the main uh, editing. You also have the coloring page and when you press it, it goes straight into color grading. There are situations where you might be in a hurry. You can just press auto color and you would all color grade your footage, but obviously it's not ideal. If you look here, you have um, different kind of tabs for each page. For example, we are in the color page one which shows us a few settings. Then if I swipe on it, it goes to color page two, which has all of these. For example, I can say cinema viewer and it will automatically make a full screen of what I'm editing, which helps a lot. Now on the color page three, you have the possibility to add a new node, for example, or add layer node or parallel node. You have the possibility to do a lot more. For example, I can add a parallel node or I can add a serial node. So it's you don't have to search for all these things or you don't have to learn a lot of different kind of, let's say, shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve because you already have them here. Now, I really wished there were more controls over the, for example, mid-tones, highlights, and shadows, which is something that I use quite a lot. And Whenever I color grade, I use them here. And that's where, for example, my uh, Blackmagic micro panel helps me is that I have all these wheels where I can color grade way easier. But of course, if we go into Premiere Pro or Lightroom or other things like that, have way more controls with this than we have in DaVinci Resolve. With DaVinci Resolve, we have a little bit of limitations, although there is a possibility to by different kind of programs, which people have already pre-programmed this Loop Deck with. Um, actually, Loop Deck has a, a shop where you can go in the marketplace and search for the, I don't know, software you're using. For example, if I search DaVinci Resolve here, it will show me um, that you can basically download something that somebody um, pre-programmed and you can install it and you can use it for color grading as well. In fact, I actually downloaded one and I'm gonna show you right now how it works. So I can go here in the Vinci Resolve and change my profile. I can change for this. And when I'm gonna go inside the Vinci Resolve, you can see I have way more controls over color grading tabs. I have controls over highlights, over everything else. So. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to get this one because it's so small. You can see we have here color rears, primaries, the exact same, let's say, uh, features that I wanted to use with this while traveling. But there is a small issue. It's not easy to, uh, like, it's easy to install them here, but you also have to pre-program them 
them with DaVinci Resolve, which is something a little bit more difficult and I didn't manage to do it. So I guess I'm gonna need more time with this machine to learn how to pre-program everything in order to have control over highlights, shadows, and saturation, and all of that. For example, if I'm going right now on this, and I wanna increase the saturation, I have to search for it. Let's see if I can find it. Temperature, color, boost, hue, saturation, and everything. So I'm gonna go to saturation, but if I increase this, nothing really happens, you see? So I didn't know how to do that. I'm gonna have to dig in deeper in order to understand that. So as you can see, in Lightroom, the loop deck already changed its program. So now we have control over contrast, over exposure, which is really cool, over temperature, for example. We also have highlights. So we can edit our photos way easier. Not only that, we also have the possibility to give stars to these photos. So for example, if we are, uh, for, uh, if we are doing a selection, whenever I do a selection of photos in Lightroom, for example, I use the stars to highlight the photos that I wanna keep or not keep. So this is really cool. We have so many different controls on it that it's, it really makes your job easier and faster. Now, of course, if you're using uh, Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you will have way more controls than I had with DaVinci Resolve, but I'm using DaVinci Resolve and still being a little bit limited, it offers me a lot of versatility and it helps me edit faster. The trim in, trim out function and the fact that I can change menus, enter full screen mode, and also color grade a little bit with this thing makes a lot of sense for me and it really helps me whenever I travel. Now, I need to install the program that I bought for it and see how better it's gonna be. I'm gonna do a separate video for that in the near future, but until that, I wanna show you something that I promised I'm gonna show you. Now, like I said, the things that I do with colors is to make sure I keep my colors always the same. Like everything that I see in DaVinci Resolve when I export is gonna look the same as I color graded it. So what you need to do whenever you do that, you need to go here down at advanced settings and set your color space tag to Rec 709 and the gamma tag to Rec 709A. And when you export like this, you're gonna have, your export is gonna look exactly the same as your color graded footage inside DaVinci Resolve. If this helps, give me a subscribe. Uh, I would be really curious to see if this is something that helped you out. But um, I wanna thank you for watching this review of the new Loop Deck Live. To be honest, I used it when I was in London recently. We filmed a lot of really cool stuff. And to be honest, after I got used to editing on my huge Max desktop at home, editing on this with the loop deck was way better than I thought. So thanks a lot for watching. I'm Alexander Don and see you on the next one. Peace.